Hello and welcome to another Build a Soil YouTube episode. Today we have the grand finale for season four. This is the wrap up episode, just going over the smoke and the post harvest report, the yield report. This is episode 26, season four. Let's get started. I've got some jars over here, which you can see I've got labeled. And I want to go over possible things that we would do different on the next round, lessons that we learned. Just kind of recap, I most importantly want to tell you which one we're keeping, what we liked out of the herb. In fact, we liked all of the different crosses that we ran. These were exceptionally good, all of them. So it was really hard to choose kind of a favorite. They were just different. Um, but I will say I did a terrible job at keeping track of the auto flowers. And so we're gonna redeem ourselves in season five by really tracking the data and doing a separate auto flower grow in a four by four tent so that you can see what it would be like given a normal home grow parameter instead of in the 10 by 10 when it's on 12, 12 or wonder it's under you know, 18 hours or when other things are vegging versus flowering. We basically, we've not done a very good job at running the autos partially because it wasn't our main goal, but secondly, just because it was always out of cycle. And this last grow for season four, if you follow along, we started some autos really early and that allowed us to get a harvest in before we basically flipped to flower for, for our regular season four run. And so then we were able to get a second round in, but that a lot of it was run on 12-12, where auto flowers are a lot better with a longer, longer day period. But in any case, I just wanted to explain why I don't have the yield numbers for the autos. They were harvested like one batch here, one batch there, where we started smoking on some. Some I just didn't trim because I just was busy. And so instead of me trying to explain all that and come up with numbers that really aren't accurate. I would rather just tell you, we blew it on the autos. However, I will say this for you autoflower growers. Daz's seeds, and I'm sure there's other breeders out there, have blown me away as far as the quality and the terpene level that one can experience from autoflowers, and I didn't know that existed. And so now I'm actually excited to grow autos from time to time. My preference is still photo periods for a number of reasons, but I've also decided that it's pretty clear our customers benefit when we discuss autos and photo period, because a lot of our customers, they're really just trying to produce their own flavors and stop buying from their guy. And so growing a few autoflowers um, is very easy and it can be rewarding to have different flavors. But I will tell you that there's still a size difference and still like when I pop lots of seeds, it's not like I can keep the one that I want, really duplicate that. And when I go through all these different herbs, I'm reminded again and again that no matter how many seeds I pop, there's always one that's just better for many reasons than the other seeds. And every time you pop autos, you're gonna have to go through all the seeds. You can't keep a keeper. You can't keep a clone or a mom. And so that's still frustrating to me, but knowing that there is good quality. And so for me, a couple of areas, if I'm busy and I don't plan on flowering for a while, being able to pop off an auto in your bedroom is kind of cool. For early season, so out here in Colorado, you know, you could get an entire round off. We've thought about doing this here, even on site, like a little outdoor. And the reason why is you get ripped if everyone knows that you're doing an outdoor grow, especially like on the highway. But if you're able to pop autos and completely get a round done before the rippers are even looking, there's some benefit to that. And when you only do one season of outdoor, having some extra auto flavors while you're letting your full season outdoor go staggers a little bit of the work and gives you kind of some extra herb. So I know there's lots of reasons to do it, but I'm just basically getting out of the way that I did not track the autos. So you're not going to hear about those numbers today. We're only going to talk about quadrants two, three, and four. And those, if you follow along on our tent, those are the different genetics that we ran. And there was four plants in each quadrant. So I've got 12 jars here. And out of these 12 jars, uh, we have a lot more that's at home, but I will go over the yield numbers right now. And as soon as we're done going over the yield numbers, cause I just want to get you the data. Um, I'm going to go over some description of what the yield looked like because it's all in reference to whether we're talking about the whole plant or just the nugs or the nugs and the trim. And I really want to give you an understanding of where my yield numbers came from. And then I want to just pop the jars and you're not going to be able to see the best on the camera right here, but I'm going to at least like hold it up and show it. Hopefully it can see something. But what I will also do is I've got a white piece of paper here and I'll take some nug shots so that we can put something on the YouTube video so you can see the quality. I don't have the ability to invest hours into taking photos or hire out to do so. So what I'd rather do is instead of putting off this video into some date of perfection, just treat it like I do in the garden. You have to get the work done. There's no perfect day that's gonna come and kind of use that as a lesson learned for myself. But I also realize there is no perfect nug shot. These are all phenomenal compared to what I started out growing versus now growing in living soil. This is some of the best quality that I've ever produced. And 
round after round is like that. It's easy to do. And I liken it to like bread baking. When you make your first loaf of bread, it's 10 times better than what you get at the store. And so nuancing over every detail of perfection. Now, every hobby has something. When you take a picture of bread, which I know you guys are all, all bread bakers, but the guys that are into it, like the, the bakers on Instagram, they'll cut a loaf in half and show it to you. And it's got big, huge holes in it. Like, you know, they got their dough recipe perfect. They folded it to get the tension. They got it to expand with the steam in the oven or however they did it to get those big, huge gaping holes. And if you're breaking, baking bread and you cut into it and it doesn't look like that, you're like, oh, I suck. <laughs> but the bread probably tastes really, really damn good compared to what you get at a store. Same here and same with all the genetics you grow. I feel like all of us growers do the same thing. We'll load up like if, if a friend wants some nugs and we're gonna give them to him, we will put our best nugs in the jar for the buddy. And we'll keep our stuff that's maybe not trimmed yet or a little bit, maybe not the top A buds because we'd rather them get the benefit of our hard work and see just how amazing it truly can be. It's like giving a drink or a meal to someone. Like you just really want them to experience the best of what it could be. And I think a lot of us growers, we have that in common. And so oftentimes I will, unfortunately, like Branson, he works here. He brings me a jar every time he has a grow and it's always good and beautiful. And I always plan on reciprocating and I'm like, oh, I'll, br I'll bring some in for the next round. But then I'll be busy or I won't get to it. And then I'm like, ah, I don't wanna just bring some untrimmed, I wanna make sure they're perfect because he's been so generous. And I'll actually end up like not even bringing it in because I care too much and I want it to be like the best. Um, so I'm just gonna get over it. And I think this is phenomenal quality. I just may not be able to show you in pictures as well, but I wanted to address those feelings because I feel like a lot of us growers have the same feelings. We just want every nug that ever goes out and leaves our property that goes to any friends that we're smoking together. We want it to be the best that there ever was. That's why a lot of us grow in the sense that we are connected in that one place where the quality of the herb, the flavor and the appearance, the structure, the texture, all of that becomes of huge importance. So um, let's just get to the yield. I could talk all day. I think all of you know that. So I've got a piece of paper so I can write these down. I had, for those of you that trim, you know that a lot of times you're writing down yield numbers like on random scraps of paper, wherever you're trimming at. And so mine, I don't think you can see, but it's like an envelope. And I had the envelope to bring down, but I left it at home. And so I'm gonna read you the numbers that I, over weeks, wrote all the yield numbers on here because it's just me trimming it. And there was just a lot to manage. So season five, I wanna get this done a lot faster and a lot better. And in fact, I think what I'd like to do for season five is do a how to trim video and utilize different methods like a trim bag, the trim brush, scissors, and also go through some of the, the process that I use where like I will clean off big leaves and stack those branches, then I'll, de then I'll buck those, then I'll go through it. So I think that would be fun to do. Um, and that could also make these videos a little more succinct at the end of the season. So I'll write this down so I can hold it up and show you at the end and we can do the totals. So you can see, so this is what our 10 by 10 looks like. And then this quadrant one was where the auto flowers were. So we're gonna do quadrant two, three, and four. And I'll write down the yields as we go. So quad two, quadrant two was the Royal Black Dog Kush. I brought some to smoke too and I wanna get that going and at least talk a little bit about the flavor of my, the one we're gonna run next cycle, which is the keeper that I kept. So the Royal Black Dog Kush, we had four in that three by three. And so this is a three by three, which had less soil than the four by four. To consider here, as far as yield is, the Royal Black Dog Kush, when we ran multiple genetics in there, was the most indica, the least stretching. And what I mean by that is it had broader leaves. It did not stretch much at all when I flipped to flower. One of them did, the rest didn't. And what's interesting is the one that did was by far the biggest yielder. So if I was to give the Royal Black Dog Kush another run, which we're not gonna do anytime soon, however, there was one particular pheno that I am in love with as far as the flavor, but I would like it to be much bigger yielding and a veg longer for me to keep it around because the trim work was a little hard on it, lots of leaf. And I think that's attributed to the way I grew it. But if I were to do the Royal Black Dog Kush again, I would veg much longer and get a really big plant before I flipped the flower. And then I think we can max out yield in that quadrant, but let's discuss it. So we had the number one was 10.3 ounces. And that was the one that stretched. It was in the back left and it took over from the front. It took over on the whole, it dominated the entire back area. And that was 10.3 ounces. And then the next one was the smallest one, 2.7 ounces. It was in the back right of the quadrant. It was the number two and it barely made it to the screen and it got cannibalized by the other plants. And so this 2.7 ounces, I'm being pretty generous. I kept a lot of what was below the screen and I didn't trim it that well. And then the front one, the number three was 
uh, 3.4 ounces. And that one I trimmed up a little bit better. That's probably a real number on the 3.4 because that was my favorite one. It was the purple one, if you remember. And what's interesting is I don't normally like the purple ones, but this one has like, it has so much flavor. It just coats your entire throat when you take a rip. And I really, really like that one. So I'll, I'll be sure to show it to you. Fourth one in the front, which is the Royal Black Dog Kush. That was the number four. And that one I liked a lot as well. That was 4.4 ounces. And so let's total up that quadrant. It was 20.8 ounces. So we got more than one pound out of the three by three using the high grove light. And I think that we could have significantly increased the yield in that quadrant based on the light in the soil had we vegged longer. And since we didn't, that's what we got, but I'm still really happy with it. And I'll show you what they look like. So the Royal Black Dog, number one, I mean, just beautiful nugs. You can tell all of them are like golf ball size, really pretty, fill up the jars easy. This is the one that stretched a little bit more and it was the frostiest. Uh, I didn't do the perfect trim drum on it, but the, the turkey bag that I had it in, because this one was the biggest yielder before I got it to jars, it was just like frost. The whole thing, every little leaf, it is the frostiest looking one. But the odor on this one in particular was just kind of sweet. Nothing really crazy stand out, but the smoke is tasty and it's very potent. So I really like the Royal Black Dog, this number one that was the best yielder, but it wasn't my keeper out of the bunch. The Royal Black Dog number two, I've already gone through some of this and this was the smallest yielder. So I brought some decent nugs so I can take some photos and share with the guys here. But this one actually had a lot sweeter odor than any of the other ones. And sweet with a little bit of funk. Not sweet like haze, but sweet like berry. And then my favorite was the Royal Black Dog number three, which I'll try and show you right here. You probably can't see on the camera. I'll do some nug shots of it, but beautiful size nugs. And yeah, you get just louder already when you're opening the jar. But this one had a lot of fuel in it, a lot of that Kush odor that I'm looking for. And whenever it has that, for whatever reason, it really coats the throat with that taste translation. So out of the Royal Black Dog Kush, the number three would be my go-to. So if you happen to have a pack of the Royal Black Dog, look for that purple Fino and tell me if you feel the same way. I really like that one. And then the number four, lots of really big nugs. This one had the bigger nugs on them. I really liked all the nugs on here were great size. Nice density to it, beautiful frost. And I'd say this one was kind of in between the one that had the most yield and the four that had the most flavor. So if I was really looking for commercial, this would probably be the one, but since it's only for me, I'm all about flavor and it's gonna be that purple one. Sorry, the number uh, three. So that's the Royal Black Dog Kush, 20.8 ounces. And you know, we were not full blast the whole time on there, but let's just call it 700 watts. So 20.8 divided by 16 is 1.3 pounds times 454 equals 590 grams. So we didn't even hit a gram per watt on there, but we did okay. Probably half the yield we should have gotten had we increased the veg time. Uh, let's go on to the next one. Let's pull up my image here. And so let's go to the, uh, this is the quadrant. You could tell it was a jungle back there. And it's because it stretched so much, there was lots of yield expanding out from the bed. First plant, I really, really liked the nug on. In fact, it was between the number one and number three. And I'm almost wishing I'd kept the number one, but the number three has a little bit more fuel to it where the number one has a, I would say that number three has a little bit more like cushiness to it, where the number one had a little bit of like more astringent fuel. And I like it when it has a more well-rounded palate coating, like fuel odor to it. And for whatever reason, the number three, it just seemed side by side, I go back and forth. It seemed louder. Like it just had the most odor and the most taste, but the nug structure on the one, I really like. So the number one, 9.7 ounces. Okay. And that's like all amazing nug. Fruit by the funk number two, Fruit by the Funk number two is 7.1. So that was the smallest um, because it was in the back right. And then Fruit by the Funk number three, which is my keeper, which I really, really liked, 14.5, almost a pound off one plant. And that was in the front quadrant. It was like leaning nugs over everywhere, lower on the side. It had the best opportunity to get light from everywhere to really have a bigger yield. And part of Growing in the 10 by 10 is we do have some overlap. And so I feel like you can get bigger yield from having more than one canopy. And that's part of why we want to show you the four by four with the autos in season five. But 
I mean, before I started the YouTube, all we did was four by four grow demonstrations on Instagram. So if you're curious about that, you can go back for year after year after year and see lots of documented four by four grows on there. If that's interesting to you, we did a lot of tent grows before we started the 10 by 10. And then the fruit by the funk number four was almost the same in the front, another 14 ounces. And these were very well trimmed, had lots of really good big nugs on there. The fruit by the funk just turned out to be one of the easiest. In fact, that number four was like no trim work. Had I picked on structure for commercial production, it would have been the number four. But the number four had more of that straw nana in it and it tasted more fruity and not as pronounced. And so it just wasn't as loud. And to me, that's what I'm all about. So you can see now 9.7, 7.1, 14.5 and 14 ounces. And so then when I look at the total here, I think I wrote down the total 45.3 ounces. And that's pretty nice. So 45.3 divided by 16 is 2.83 pounds out of a four by four bed of fruit by the funk. And I'll show you the nug here in just a second. 1.83 grams per watt. And you know, we could have been, we dimmed it a little is why I use that number. Um, the plants grew so close to it. It was probably below 700 Watts the way we were running it, but it was getting overlap. So the grams per watt, I mean, it's nice to know that you have a benchmark, but grams per watt can be affected by veg time, which you saw in quadrant two. Had we veg twice as long, our grams per watt would be way up, but we didn't like buy a new light, right? It's the same light. So just be careful when you're comparing grams per watt, make sure you investigate veg time. Was it a good full canopy or wasn't? But either way, that's pretty good. Almost two grams per watt over there. Had I left a little more of the lower nugs on there and not trimmed it as well, we probably could have been pushing closer. But what I aim to do when I do this is trim them all pretty similarly so that we're getting as accurate from season to season results as I can, right? If someone else trimmed a lot more aggressively, their yield number not, might go down. I'd done a season where I like weighed the trim versus the nug so we could have the total and it just becomes hard. You know, there's so much to do. Fruit by the Funk uh, turned out to be my favorite as far as because the yield could really go through some quality nugs and I just love the Cam D that's in there. Fruit by the Funk number one, let me see here. Oh yeah. See, even this number one still has that more like fuely, like, like paint thinnery, like a little bit more chemically, but just greasy, like stuck together, beautiful. In fact, the one that I kept, the number three had the worst structure as far as trimming, but it was the loudest. I hate it when that happens. I wish the one that was the easiest to trim was the keeper. Man, these are just beautiful. I wish I could show you better. I will take some pictures so you can see. So that's the fruit by the funk number one. Really liked that one a lot. Fruit by the Funk number two. This one was, you know, let me remind myself. I, this wasn't, wasn't the keeper. This has a little bit more fuel on it than the number four does that I told you was like more. The Fruit by the Funk is a Chem D I-95 cross and it also has the straw Nana in it. And so we're talking fruit and funk. That's why he calls it Fruit by the Funk. And I'd say this one is more leaning towards the Chem D I-95 side. And I like that. And then the star, the keeper, beautiful, big nugs, a little more trim work, a little more like nuanced shape on the nugs with a little more leaf to pull off compared to the number four, but the nugs, I mean, yeah, the density, the greasiness, like rips apart like Velcro, like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I kept this one over the number one. It's funny, I share some of these, like I'll ask other employees what they think and sometimes someone will be like, oh, that one's way sweeter. I'm like, what? So our preferences aren't always the same, but I feel like when you smoke with a group of people and you notice that you are able to develop words that you understand over the palate, it helps express that. But this is the keeper. It's absolutely beautiful. I'll take a nug shot of it. That's the number three. And then the number four. And the number four, you can probably tell from here, they're like beautiful. I didn't even barely trim them and they're all perfectly manicured. So this one would have been like a dream had it had all the odor and flavor. It has great bag appeal, has lots of density. It was so easy on trimming, but it just kind of, it lost all the fuel. It leaned a little bit towards the straw nana side, but it didn't have that unbelievable strawberry banana terp that you're looking for out of the straw nana. So although this is great herb and I would feel great giving it to a buddy because it looks so beautiful, I just wish the number three had this structure, but it's all good. You can't get them all. And that's where breeding comes in. You start to find odors you like and you start to find structure you like, and hopefully we can make some seeds and share them in the future that are some of our preferences. Okay, let's get, I'm taking too long. Let's get to the last quadrant, Soleil Levant. 
Soleil Levant, this was grown in the Autopots, and I did a terrible job with the Autopots, but I think we're gonna kill it in the Autopot XXL, and I think had we prepared ahead for the Autopot XL a little bit better, we would have done better, and I probably should have fed. I probably should have just been like, you know what, we're gonna do some organics alive, or whatever it took to make sure they were happy. I did like one or two feedings, and I just gave up on it. I was too busy, and I didn't want to be proper about feeding because it gets more like hydro, and I just wanted to let it ride. So I let it ride, and I will tell you, the nugs are just like they were when growing. Some of the loudest in the bunch, some of my favorite. It's very difficult between all four of them have really strong terps, and I'll do my best to explain what those terps are to me right now. But let's go over the yield numbers. I'll show you the nugs. I'll discuss it, and then I want to smoke one. I don't have a ton to talk about today. I do have some of the things we do differently, and I've already mentioned one would be vegging the Royal Black Dog a little longer. The next one would be uh, flipping the flower sooner on the fruit by the funk, just because it stretched into the ceiling. And then we could have kept the light maxed. Then I could have had more A nugs all the way across instead of some like, like almost overexposed nugs right under the light and some that were further away. And you get this variety, which variety is fun, but I really want it to be uniformly amazing. So we'll talk about that before we completely close it off for the day, maybe while I'm smoking. And then so Soleil Levant, let's go over yield numbers. Soleil Levant number one, 4.4, 4.4 ounces. Soleil Levant number two, 4.3 ounces. Soleil Levant number three, 4.1 ounces. And Soleil Levant number four, 3.5 ounces. Now here's what I will tell you. These numbers are a little elevated. While it looks like we pulled more than a pound, which 16.3 ounces was the total for quadrant three, the herb was so good and terpy that I decided to leave a lot more trim on than I usually would. And I, instead of tossing certain nugs into the trim pile, I kept all the little nugs. Now the nugs are still pretty and everything, but they weren't like as all big, beautiful as like the fruit by the funk, just because the way that we grew them and the smaller containers and the yield was all over the place. There weren't as many top big nugs. It still added up because the Soleil Levant out of all of them, it kept its moisture in the bag. It's got this greasiness to it that like, it's hard to get it to be over dried. I really like that quality in an herb where it's greasiness keeps it like the target window for drying so wide. Like even if you get it drier, like it's, it's just got that tackiness to it. So the Soleil Levant number one, is just one of my favorites. Right out the gate, you get this like fueliness, this astringent like chemicaliness with fruit in the right way where it's like, it tastes sweet, but it's in, it's not a combination. It's like layers. You pick up like fuel, then you pick up fruit and you can't quite put your finger on it. And the reason why I was excited about growing the Soleil Levant is in here is some Oz Kush. And if you relate back, build a soil, when I first started in my garage, one of the, one of the tipping points for build a soil where I really got inspired was Kevin Rootwise. We started talking about his outdoor grow, his products and doing his final outdoor season or his greenhouse season. And he was questioning me about the soil and we were gonna work together as far as at least providing his soil. We weren't even talking about a business relationship yet. We were just geeking out on herb. And I could tell he was like, knew more than me. He was seasoned. And he was gonna go to the Emerald Cup and I decided, fuck it, I'm going. And so I went out there, we linked up and spent most of the time together. And he introduced me to breeders that he'd known over the years through the forums. I got some incredible seeds that I never would have gotten in relationships that I never would have had by just meeting these people that he knew at the Emerald Cup. And you're supposed to have your, um, you're supposed to have your medical license. And at that time, like later years past, I found out you didn't have to live in California to get one. I did when I lived there, but I thought there's no way I can get a med license. And so I was like sneaking in like seven in the morning. I would just like, grab a box and be like, yep, just setting up a booth. And we walked back in and I just wouldn't leave the medical area until I was done shopping for seeds and bullshitting with everybody. And it ended up being one of the best years ever. Malibu, we met Randy that year and picked up a truckload of Malibu compost. And that was serendipitous because the biodynamic prep maker happened to be friends with Kevin and they didn't know it. I mean, just all these weird synchronicities were coming together. And at that event, I remember I was at the, um, I think I was at Dying Breed Seeds. I was standing there at their booth and you know, they weren't open yet, they were setting up. And I remember mentioning, hey, what's the one that, like, what's everybody coming for? What are, they gonna, what are you gonna sell out of first? And he goes, oh, these Oz Kush. And I was like, I'll take one. <laughs> and immediately grabbed a pack. And it was one of the best decisions I ever made. That in particular was the Eddie, Eddie Lepp Kush OG crossed to the skills. And that's just what I knew it was. Well, when I grew it, it turned out to be one of my favorite strains. I gave the cutting away and I know people still have it out here and we're growing it for years. And I lost it. And then um, Kid Kaya shows me that a Soleil Levant has Oz Kush in it. 
And the smile on my face when I started seeing these grow and smelling the odors is so reminiscent of that Oz Kush. It makes me want to run it again. So I think we're going to run it again for season five in quadrant four. I ah, just, it like completely takes over when you open this jar. This is what I'm looking for. When I go to a Build As Well event, if I could bring this jar, all I have to do with all the other booths going on is go like this. And people just start showing up to the booth. And then we can talk about how we got the results. So that is what you're looking for. So they live on number two. Let's see here. I mean, a little bit more berry to it, not as much fuel. But I mean, it's there. Like I told you, it's very hard to determine between rock hard, greasy nugs. Like all of them are really, really nice. I think that even though the nugs were smaller, the only way I got up to that pound is because really there's some weight to that greasiness of the nugs, even though they're smaller. That, I think the number one's my favorite. I didn't keep a keeper, so the numbers weren't as important to me. I just didn't have moms of it. And that's why we're gonna, I've got more packs of it. We're gonna grow more. Hopefully we get the build a soil cut. We'll be able to give it away because this Soleil is very special. And the Soleil number three. Ooh, so. See, there's layers on this one too. It's so complex. I love that when it's not muddled, it's like fuel hits you first, then the sweetness hits you second. And there's something very complex about it. And when it's growing, I suspect this is the one that all the customers, when they came in, they're like, bro, it smells good in here. Oh, Kid Kaya, you outdone yourself. I really, 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 really like this herb. I want to do a better job at it. We're going to run it again for season five. Okay. And then the Soleil Vaunt number four. This one has like a complex fermented berry to it. I like the number one that has, it's just, the number one reminds me of the Oz Kush. And when you roll up that Oz, and you would take a dry rip, it was so much of that Skittle and OG and everything in there. You started to realize, oh, this is why they called it Skittles. Holy shit. Maybe it wasn't just hype. I love the Soleil Levant. So I love all of them. You can probably tell that. The Royal Black Dog, number three, unbelievable flavors. The Soleil is just checks all of them off for me. All of the marks. Like, I really like that. And then the Fruit by the Funk, number three that we ended up keeping. I think I'm going to keep it around for a while. We'll see what happens after this next run. I tend not to keep as many moms. I may end up keeping the Soleil around, but um, fruit by the funk, you can't get the seeds anymore. So I'd like to grow it again. And when we grow it again, because it's a mom, I'll probably have some extra cuts and I'll, I'll make a, I'll keep the mom and I'll grow it out again. And maybe we'll be able to give away some of the build a soil cuts. That's really fun to share what we've experienced together through YouTube. And so if you end up ever coming to build a soil and you can plan ahead of time, a lot of times we'll just give away cuts, even if I don't have time to root them. So um, something to mention out there. Otherwise, that's really it. The whole goal of this was to at least go over the yield and share it with you and talk about my feelings of the nugs. So let's go over what I would have done differently. Quadrant two, Royal Black Dog Kush, I would have vegged much longer. And I would have cleaned up the lowers under the canopy better, and I would really make sure those are huge bushes before I flipped. Uh, quadrant two, I would have flipped a lot earlier. And now that I know that, I'm going to be cognizant of that as we go into the next season with these clones. But part of me is excited to have such a, a big stretcher because it produces lots of yield without as much veg time. To me, that's the goal, especially indoors. Because if you can cut out veg time, then you just have more flower time. Where outdoor, it's fine. You have to veg as the sun is as, you know, changing. So that's something to consider. And then quadrant three, I would have fed organics alive or I would have run bigger containers. And I think we broke a rule for quadrant three. So it's not surprising to me that we also lost a little bit of yield and could have done better. It's because we used smaller containers than the build the soil way ever recommends. Good news is some of my favorite herb came out of that quadrant. So you don't have to do everything right to get this to work. Now bringing it back full circle to what I brought up before, this was a long run, probably one of the longest runs we've ever done. I started the seeds, then we left town, had to go to an event, and then we went to my wife's hip surgery. And then we had issues with them over vegging before sexing, before transplanting, then my wife's hip surgery, then someone else taking care of the plants. Then I came back. It was like the run from hell as far as logistics go. But I'll tell you this, my wife's doing great. We made it through all of that. I came back and we had some issues with, you know, being gone so long and little fires to put out at the business, but the grow, it just kept going. And part of why we teach this method is because it fits my lifestyle. And a lot of our customers, they tell me the same thing they've got school or kids or work or whatever's going on in their life to take up their time. And while they would love to devote all their time to their grow, it's nice to be able to pick and choose when. So when you have that downtime, you can go spend all the time you want with your plants and pluck leaves and just inspect things and be, and be really there for them. 
But when you have a four by four bed of soil and you don't have time, you can make sure that the moisture is dialed in and you can just literally not spend any time in there. And I feel like the best runs I have are when I'm caring on the plants and keeping a routine, but I'm not in there fiddling all the damn time with the plants. I literally just let them do their thing. And I become a steward while I'm really just making sure the environment's right and the moisture's dialed and they, and they crush it. So take that for what it's worth. The build a soil way really adapts itself to a busy lifestyle. You should be able to leave for the weekend and like go camping, go snowboarding, take a little vacation. And worst case, if that turns into a long vacation, you should be able to tell one of your buddies, hey, just put the water in there that I left there. Or I'm just gonna set up a blue mat or I'm gonna set up an automatic watering system. It'll be fine until I get back. And then you can use the moisture meters, the eco wits that we talked about and other ways to monitor from afar. And so those eco wits were so nice. I can't tell you how many times I'd water on a Sunday and I thought, you know, the plants will be fine to make it through. I'm sorry, I'd water on a Saturday and I'd think the, the plants are fine to make it through Sunday. But on Sunday morning, I would pull up my app and I would just check the eco wit moisture all the way from home, 40 minutes from here. And I'd go, okay, there's plenty of moisture. I feel good, I don't have to go in there. Where before I had that, I would drive 40 minutes in just to go, yeah, they look fine, close the tent and leave. Because I don't want to f up on YouTube and have plants that I neglected because I didn't want to drive in. So it turns into seven days a week, which I'm sure you can appreciate when you have a garden. So those are the things I do differently. We're going to do that. I will make the announcements. I, I basically have the plans and I could put it in here, but I'd rather do a season five kickoff announcement where we discuss what the plans are. And then we start to plan the timeline of planting the seeds versus the clones and all the different quadrants and the auto flowers. We have a really exciting season coming up for season five and I'm not leaving a week after I pop seeds. My wife's not going into a major hip surgery. I really feel like season five, we're gonna get to do our best as far as being connected to the energy that I'm giving you, teaching you as much as I can and sharing with you the process through this season because I'm excited for the renewal. So I'm really ready to just put this chapter and move on to the next one. And I really appreciate you guys being here for the whole time. I'm gonna roll one real quick and I'm just gonna see if I have any last thoughts while I do so and we'll just wrap it up. Normally I would be smoking the whole time or discussing it, but I'm just gonna do it right now. This is uh, something that's fun for me to do. I'm gonna grab, I kinda wanna smoke some Soleil, but this Fruit by the Funk is my favorite. Let's grab the Soleil little number one. Let's do that. Oh my God, it's so nice. Okay. Oh my God, this is so loud. I'm glad I'm doing this after hours. If I were to break this up in here during the day, to every employee out here in two seconds, what's going on in there? I mean, it's just greasy. Okay. I'm just gonna roll a little one. I really appreciate all you guys watching this stuff. It's really changed our life to have the YouTube and you know, Instagram and all that, but it's better on YouTube because I can actually teach. We're on IG, it was always just like photos and it would trigger more questions than answers. And I honestly feel like such a great community of you guys. You guys are answering each other's questions on there. And I'm learning from some of you guys. I, I mean, shit, the eco wit moisture meter was a suggestion from a Discord member. All brought about because of the YouTube. So, all right, here we go. So what I like to do, I always use a crutch. Some people don't, I just prefer it. I put it in the back and I roll it all up together. Oh, this is gonna be so easy, it's so sticky. So I like to completely roll, lick from the outside, instead of trying to lick it like an envelope. And it works perfect for me. I can't believe anybody licks the inside. I don't know why, it's like such a pain and then you rip it and then you have to seal it and I know people are great at it, but I just roll it up perfect and then from there that's it. Okay. Mm. That right there is what I'm looking for. It's so good. I wish I could share this with you. I love this Soleil Levant. It like hits you like candy and like fuel and everything and you can just taste it just on the dry rip. And that's why I really like joints when it comes to testing. Also like certain herb, even though it was grown well, like it doesn't lend itself to like breaking up like for joints perfectly. Some nugs, I think you can feel me like, you're like, damn, this is good. It rolls so easy. Where some you're like, yeah, I don't know what this is. It just doesn't roll right. Don't mind my lighter. It's what we had here. Oh yeah. 
I can't wait. I'm gonna give this another run for sure, season five. There's just so much flavor and odor. That's what I'm looking for. I mean, you get fruit, you get funk. I know this is not the fruit by the funk. There's some of that in there too, but I gravitate towards those one that have the fuel in there for sure. But when you get the combo, I like that Oz Kush. Really reminiscent of the Oz Kush. I like this one a lot. So 20.8, 45.3, and 16.3. I think I added it up, I might as well write it down. 20.8 plus 45.3 plus 16.3, 82.4, 5 5.15 pounds? No wonder why it took so fucking long to trim. And, and that's three quadrants. We definitely got a decent amount of yield out of two runs of the autos too, so pretty amazing. I got nothing more to talk about. I'm feeling great. I'm gonna put this out, wrap up this final episode. Appreciate all you guys watching. If you've got comments on this, if you've grown any of these before, you like these breeders, you just have something to talk about, drop the comments in here. I'd love to go over it with you. We're gonna do um, more FAQs for season five. So if you've got some season ending questions in here, we might have room for one more season four FAQ related to these videos. As always, like, subscribe, tell your friends, follow the Build a Soil way. Thank you so much for watching. And until the next one, I'll see you guys on the next Build a Soil video.